What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. For those of you who are not familiar with this channel, my name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And today I wanna to sit down and talk to you about money advice for teenagers. I would say this video is definitely for anybody age 16 and up, even all the way up to 35, but it's especially for 18 year olds. But I'll say this, this video is basically for young adults. I think nowadays more than ever, we need to talk to young adults about finances, how to manage them, go over certain terminologies, but also just how to live and actually function within the real world. Because right now, it's pretty hard to be 18, 19, 20, even 21 in some cases, and living on your own, paying your own rent or mortgage. It's just not as realistic as it used to be just a few short years ago. And I think this video can help prepare you for the real world, not only financially, but mentally as well. So let's jump into this. The first thing I wanna tell you is this, and it might not seem financial. You've gotta surround yourself around the right people. You are the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. I've said this before, I'm saying it again because it is 1000% true. If you spend most of your time around five people who don't wanna better themselves, don't wanna do anything, that are lazy, that just be chilling all the time, not even trying to go to the next level, you're gonna be just like that. That is gonna rub off on you. If you're around a lot of social people, you're probably gonna be more social, even if you are an introvert. If you're around people who like to read, you're probably gonna be picking up a book. And with that said, if you're around responsible people, you're gonna be responsible and vice versa. Same thing goes for irresponsible. So it's not hard to see that if you surround yourself around broke people, you're probably gonna end up like that. It first starts off with a mindset. Surround yourself around the right people. And a good way to do this is look at what your core values are and what your morals are and, and just your goals and aspirations in life. I'm not saying they have to be exactly like you and I'm not saying they're gonna do everything that you agree with. You know what I'm saying? But the point is, if you're hanging out with people who are the polar opposite of you, eventually they're gonna rub off on you in the worst way possible. So that's number one, especially if you decide to go out to college or if you go into full-time work immediately after high school, you're gonna have to have, you're gonna have some decisions to make because there's definitely gonna be people on both sides of the fence. There are gonna be people who want to improve themselves and move up at work. There's gonna be people who want to actually study and get good grades and get their degree. And there's gonna be people who ain't about nothing. And those people who ain't about nothing, they might be cool people to be around. They might be fun to be around, but are they good to spend most of your time with? That's what you gotta ask yourself. You gotta surround yourself with the right people. And this is something that I actually had a lot of success with throughout my life, but what it boils down to is your judge of character. And I know that might sound like kind of financial advice is this. Trust me, I'm getting to it. I'm gonna tell you a quick story that leads into the second piece of financial advice I have for you if you're a teenager or just a young adult. We're just gonna say young adults for the rest of this video. An old mentor of mine told me, observe the masses and do the exact opposite because everybody talks the talk. Everybody wants to be great, you know what I'm saying? At least they say they do. But how many people do you actually see do the things that are required that are necessary to become great? You get what I'm saying? If you watch my video, the things that your father should have taught you about money, takes the words I said in these first few minutes of this video and brings them to life. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, there's not a ton of financial advice that I haven't already given to everyone else watching this channel. The same exact thing correlates to teenagers, to young adults, to old people, like to whoever. I don't mean to say old people, but you know what I'm saying? Somebody old is probably watching my channel. And I say that because, yes, there's a lot of foundational finance advice I could give you, but literally it's no different than any other financial advice I give to anyone else watching this channel. If you watch the how to move out of your parents' house video, if you look at any of my frugal living videos, how to save money videos, like literally apply the same exact thing. But the biggest thing that teenagers and young adults struggle with is peer pressure from people their age or just outside influences. It might even be their parents. You know what I'm saying? Cousins, their friends, whatever the case is, their girlfriend, their boyfriend, you really don't know. But the bottom line is this, if you surround yourself around the right people anyway, you won't have to deal with any of this mess. You won't be at the mall with somebody tempting you to spend your money like like they're, <laughs> like they know your financial situation. You won't be around any troublemakers anyway. You won't even put yourself in that situation. You won't put yourself in a situation to be out at night and potentially get hurt. You know what I'm saying? If you hang out with a bunch of gangbangers, what do you think is gonna happen to you? You might end up in a scrap somewhere. You know what I'm saying? End up in a fight. You might get roughed up a little bit or worse. And so I would say, and so 
that's what the masses do. Like the masses do things to get into trouble. What what is popular with most young people? Drugs, alcohol, crime, doing crazy stuff, and young people get a bad rap for it. Not all young people are like that, but th those are very popularly known things that young people get themselves into. Getting arrested, being reckless, giving in to mainly drugs and sex. That's the main name of the game. Everybody wants to be cool. Everyone wants to fit in. Everyone wants to say, oh yeah, I got with this girl. Yeah, I did this. I did that. Like, See, stuff like that is what I'm talking about. It's like they do things for bragging rights. I grew up seeing it my entire life and I never understood it. I've always been somewhat of an old soul myself, you know what I'm saying? But it's just it's just the truth. And if you stay out of that stuff, you're more likely to stay out of financial trouble in the long run. And here's why. That's the extreme part of the spectrum. But I'm if you're in the middle, you know what I'm saying? What do kids give into? A bunch of fads. So it might be like a fad like music. Like what's the most popular music right now? It might be hot today and gone tomorrow. You get what I'm saying? And it's like, who's the best rapper? Who's the best singer? Who's dressing the best? Who's most in style right now? Who's cool and who's lame? That's what the masses give into. The masses give into, oh, who, oh, those are some nice Jordans. Those are some nice Nikes. Man, you're fresh today. Who's wearing name brand? Who's wearing that off-brand stuff? And you get clowned if you're not wearing certain name brand stuff. Or even if you are wearing name brand stuff, you, you might be rocking some New Balances and someone who thinks it's cool to wear Nike and Jordans and Adidas like, ha, you're lame because you wear New Balances. And then you get jokes like your parents can't afford this. I grew up seeing this type of stuff. I'm telling you right now, and even and even if you're not like on the younger side, if let's say you're 26 and up and you're watching this video, that kind of mindset follows you throughout your life if you don't realize it. And I'll say this, how many people from your high school that were like maybe football or basketball players, how many of them do you hear, you know, basking in the glory days talking about, yeah, we used to act up in Miss Simmons' class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Miss Crumpton's class, we used to act a fool. I was a class clown there. It's like, that's all you can, re that's all you can really think about right now is how you used to act up in high school. How popular it used to be or who you could holler at. You know what I'm saying? Who you could get with. That used to be what was cool for you. That's what you're talking about right now and you're 26. This stuff was going on when you were 16, 17 years old. And, and now here we are 10 years later. And that's all you can talk about? What about your accomplishments? What about your accolades? What about your improvements? What about your career? What about your aspirations in life? Do you have a family? Do you want to have a family? I don't want to hear about how you used to kill it on the football field. You ain't playing football no more. I don't want to hear about how you were on the varsity basketball team. What are you doing now? I don't want to hear about it because the bottom line is this. The masses end up smoking weed and chilling. The masses end up having sex with people that they care nothing about. Just purely because they're attracted to them. They, they like the way they look. The masses want to talk about getting that paper even though they're probably just working at McDonald's. And that's no disrespect to anybody who works at McDonald's. I'm just saying... You're not making no six figures working at McDonald's. You're not making the salary that you want to make doing those types of jobs. But that's what I'm saying. And the reason I bring up the McDonald's example before I make somebody mad and click off this video, the reason I brought up McDonald's is because I remember being in high school on summer break, on winter break and stuff like that. And I specifically remember there were girls and guys alike. They would go to McDonald's like for their summer jobs. See, for me, it was Food Lion. So Food Lions was my McDonald's, so to speak. But they would go to McDonald's and they would be getting their, you know, they're like between seven and eight dollars an hour. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'm making this paper. They would take pictures of themselves holding money. You don't want to surround yourself around these types of people because they're not really making money. Think about this. If the dollar loses value every single day because of inflation, how is it smart to take your earnings out of your bank just to take a picture and show it to everybody? And then you spend it anyway. That's what I'm saying. You don't want to you don't want to surround yourself around these types of people. First of all, they're the type to brag when they do get a little bit of money. And second, they just have that immature type of mindset. That's not going to help you grow as a person. That's not going to help you grow as a man or as a woman. I'm not saying never be friends with these people, never talk to them, never look at them. I'm saying these don't need to be a part of your core circle. See, when I was in high school, when I was in college even, I had a very large circle, but only about five of them were who I spent most of my time with. And those five people were very, very, very good people to be around. Good influences. They had good habits. They were healthy people. They were smart people. Still are. I still talk to them this day. We have extremely close relationships and we're all spread across the country. Literally, every single one of us are in different states. But that's all right with me because... I know who I can count on and I know who I can be around 
And when we have these conversations on the phone, we're on the same page and we're able to pick each other up and help each other. This is what you want in the future. Th these are the people you want to be around. You want to surround yourself around someone who has good money habits. And, and let me tell you something. None of these people I'm talking about have bad money habits. Not a single one of them. All of them making good money. And we're able to bounce ideas off each other and stuff like that. We all have priorities. We prioritize the right way. And I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but I'm dead serious. Like, if you really don't surround yourself around the best people for you, you're going to end up finding yourself around people who have no business being around you. And they're going to have a negative influence on you. I've seen it happen a thousand times. And this goes for anything in life, not even just money. Like, if you're trying to be somebody who is a very physically in shape person who has only healthy habits. You don't need to be hanging around people who eat a bunch of junk food all day and you know what I'm saying, binge drink all weekend and you know what I'm saying, do drugs. That's obviously the exact polar opposite of what you're wanting to do with your life. They might be fun to be around on the weekend, but is it helping you reach your goal? Probably not. Matter of fact, it's probably taking you so far away from your goal that you might end up being too far gone. So it's the same thing with having a quality relationship. Like I said, you're the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. So if you're the type of person who wants a relationship, but then the five people you spend most of your time with, they're all about hooking up with random people just because they're attracted to them. Do you think you're going to reach your goal of having a fulfilling relationship? Probably not. It's definitely easy to fall into the trap. Just like it's easy to fall into the trap of saying, oh, I deserve this. Come on, man. You, you, you make good money. You, you deserve to treat yourself. And after a while of seeing it happening and seeing the lives or the lifestyle, I should say, of those who make good money, who keep treating themselves, you see that lifestyle, you're like, oh, man. See, people keep promoting lifestyle and having a good time and resting and relaxing. Ain't no relaxing right now. This video is for the young bucks. What you relaxing for? I'm not saying never relax. I'm saying it shouldn't be a 24 seven type of thing. Like you should be having that fire within you to keep improving, to keep earning more, to keep saving more, to keep investing more, to keep getting out of debt if you have any debt or preventing debt in general. You get what I'm saying? These should be the priorities of someone who is young. Not relaxing, not living that good lifestyle, not traveling the world. Cause how often, matter of fact, I'll say this, how long do you think you'll be able to travel the world? Maybe a few years, but then you, ha you have to go to somebody's office. You have to make some income from somewhere. We can't give into these pipe dreams of, oh yeah, I'm, I'm 15 years old and I'm a millionaire and I've amassed this and that and I, I go anywhere I want to and I'm retired for life. There's a bunch of lies on the internet. Some people do live like that for real and hats off to them. I don't got no hat on right now, but hats off to them. But for the overwhelming majority, you're going to have to make very responsible decisions. And you can't do that when you're around people who are inhibiting you from making the decisions you know you should be making. And sometimes it's best to spend time alone. See, I'm going all over the place, but this is dead serious. I think we need to spend more time alone as young adults because you really get to understand yourself, really get to know yourself. And then you can surround yourself around people who are just like you or who complement who you are because you're going to have strengths and weaknesses. You need to be around people who you complement their weaknesses and they complement your weaknesses. And you grow better as people and as friends. And then you get a really tight knit group. Even if you all don't hang out with each other, there are people that you know and that you hang out with individually. That's what I'm saying. So I, so I say all that to say, hang around people who have good financial habits, but not just financial, like good physical habits, like being good with their health. Maybe they read. Maybe they have that good mental health. They're down to earth, good, good to talk to. That's who you want to hang around. That's who you want to spend majority of your time with. Not, not these yahoos who just be sitting around popping beer cans all day like, bro, there's more to life than that. I'm not against that. I'm just saying that shouldn't be all that your friends do. Like, I know so many people who all they're about is just having fun all the time. And then they look at people like me. Can't be all about work. I'm not all about work. I have me a good time, but I have a balance. You get what I'm saying? And before I get on to the next topic, the biggest thing you want to shoot for in life is having that peace of mind. And that's why I said you have to really be careful about who you spend your time with and who you hang around because they can bring more peace or more chaos into your life if you don't choose wisely. So choose wisely and choose the ones who bring peace into your life. Ease of mind into your life, down to earth, easy to talk to. They, they're good to have a good time with too. They're for you when you're having hard times. You know what I'm saying? They're for you when you have a breakup. They're to walk you through how they got out of debt quick and how you can do the same thing. 
There's times where my friends hit me up and they want financial advice and I help them out. There's stuff that I can go to them for and there's stuff they can come to me for. That's what it's all about. That's what the dynamic is all about. So obviously I can't stress that enough, but that is huge with any financial, with any health related thing, with any relational thing, even spiritually, like these things matter. That's why when it comes to all around advice I could possibly give you, I would say this, find three to five really good people that is your core circle. They can be family members, it doesn't matter. Family, friends, whatever you choose. But they have to be people that you know you can go to, that they can come to you as well, and that is mutual, and you really complement each other. Anyway, on to the next topic. Earlier I was talking about making that money and what the young people say nowadays is getting the bag. I think that is so ridiculous. But anyway, besides the point, I'm not gonna be too judgmental today. I'm just gonna say this. Don't be romantic about what makes you money. Don't close your mind to certain opportunities because I'm gonna tell you this. I went to school, I went to college, I should say, for engineering. And I was dead set on being an engineer. I was going to be the best engineer there ever was, you know what I'm saying, as far as I was concerned. And then when I got my first internship, it was called the Interneering Internship. But here's the problem. There was nothing engineering about it. It actually ended up being leadership, specifically management. And if I would have been like, no, nah, I don't want to do that because I want to be an engineer. Sitting here right now at the salary I'm at, I'm making a lot more than the engineers are making. I'm just putting that out there right now. And I say that not to highlight my salary, but I say it to be very realistic about what my goals were because my degree really got my foot into a lot of buildings and a lot of companies. And it put me in a position to choose what position I would want to work and where I would want to work. And that's a very beautiful thing. But if I would have just closed my mind to engineering, I wouldn't have realized or understood until it was too late that engineering isn't as lucrative as it used to be back in the day. The salary caps out a lot faster for engineers than it does for like management and leaders and things of that nature. And a lot of you were probably like me where you're super ambitious, where you're not even trying to just do the corporate America gig and make a good salary. Like you're, for you, that might not be good enough. You might want to have your own business to the side, but still, you can't be romantic about what it is that gets you to where you want to be. Like you have to really be open-minded about what that could be. Let me tell you a quick story. When I first got out of college and I was working my job, I hated my job, but I was making a good amount of money. So I was like toughing my way through it. You know what I'm saying? But but on the side, I had mentors and I had a business that I was trying to run and it was an MLM and I didn't know anything about MLMs back then. I thought they were totally legit. Not that MLMs aren't legit. It's just, they're really not the best way to make money. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go as far to say they're one of the worst ways you can make more money because I was investing like $600 a month, but literally I was getting like a negative return. So like it really didn't make sense. And I was just so dead set that that was going to be the way that I become a millionaire. And it totally was not. I'm just putting that out there. That is not how I made my money. You get what I'm saying? I just knew that that was going to be how I was going to become a millionaire. That was not the case at all. By a long shot, it was not the case. I was like, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be it right here. This is how I'm going to quit my job. This is how I'm going to, you know, be making passive income of six figures or more a year and how I'm going to eventually stack my money up and become a millionaire and blah, 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 and invest. And nah, ain't none of that happened. And then about a year and a half later, I came to my senses. I was like, this ain't it. But if I were open-minded from the beginning, I might have realized that that wasn't it and kept on doing what I was doing. And then hence the YouTube and the Facebook videos and things of that nature were born because I did gain a lot of experience from doing that type of stuff. And I really got passionate about the financial field. And I'm, I'm going as far to say this. I'm, I don't need to be getting romantic about the YouTube thing. Because at first, when I, when I started my YouTube channel, I saw all these other YouTubers having extreme success. You know what I'm saying? Making 150, even some a million dollars a year off of their YouTube channel. I was like, I can do that too. Why can't I do it too? And that's a great mindset to have. But you can't, you don't get to decide how you're going to become successful financially. You just don't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with my YouTube channel. I'm happy with my YouTube channel making between $400 and $1,000 a month. I'm, I'm more than happy with that. That supplements my income. And, and once it hits further than that, then I'll be extremely ecstatic. But the point is, I'm not relying on YouTube, a platform that I have no control over, to pay my bills, to pay me, to get me to millionaire status, to get me to where I want to be in life. I'm not relying on all of that. 
I just wrote a book. I'm not relying on that book to be the, the one thing. Like you can't keep relying on everything. You just you keep trying things and see what works. And I'm still in the stage where I'm still trying things. But the thing is, I did find what I'm passionate about. I did find my core audience. I did find my purpose in life. And all I have to do is keep doing my work. And I know good things are going to just happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm consistent. I have a plan. I learn from my failures. I learn from my shortcomings. And I keep getting up and I keep moving. And I keep moving the needle forward. That's what it's all about. And I definitely don't rely on just my job. Like even though I'm making a good salary and everything, and I'm in a very good place at my job, and I, I really feel comfortable there, I'm going to tell you something. I don't rely on any one source of income to pay me for the rest of my life because anything can happen at any given time. Y'all probably learned that when the pandemic first hit in 2020. Anything can happen at any given time. People who had good jobs cut. Tesla laid a lot of people off furloughed them and everything. Not just Tesla, a lot of companies did. A lot of people had to sell their houses. A lot of people were in financial situations. Don't be like that. So that's what I'm saying. I guess what I'm saying is don't rely on just one stream of income. And also, if you are ambitious and you want to build multiple streams of income, or if you're ambitious and you just want to move up at work, don't rely on that being the one thing that gives you your big break. Because you might not get that promotion. And even if you do, it might not be what you thought it was. I'm speaking wisdom. I hope y'all listening. I'm speaking that wisdom. This is from experience. And it's funny. I was watching this interview with Steve Harvey the other day, and he put it best. He said this. He said, man, if you're thirsty, <laughs> I'm trying not to talk exactly like him, but he was like, man, if you're thirsty, what difference does it make if you drink Coke or coconut water? You're trying to quench your thirst. You know what I'm saying? And so if it's Coke Zero that gets it done, it might it might not be what you thought it was. You might have wanted water. You might have wanted Gatorade. But if Coke Zero is what gets it done, then, I mean, who are you to complain? I mean, when you're in the desert, you ain't got time for all this. That's, that's what he said. I thought that was the funniest thing. He was like, when you're in the desert, you ain't got time for all this. And the desert is, in this theoretical example, the desert for you is wanting to improve your financial situation. Wanting to move up at work. Wanting to build other streams of income. See, I thought what was going to build me my first stream of passive income was MLM. I ain't going to say which MLM it was, but I thought it was MLM. The whole time, it was something else. It was what I was actually passionate about. Making videos online. And I was thinking that that was going to give me like passive income in terms of me being able to make a literal living off of passive income. But it wasn't. But it was a good amount of money to supplement my income. You get what I'm saying? That's my Coke Zero. I don't know what's going to be that one big thing. All I know is this YouTube channel has opened a lot of opportunities for me. A lot, I get a lot of emails from companies that I end up turning down. But I know that's a good sign because I'm doing my work and the good things that I was talking about earlier are happening. I'm getting DMs on Instagram from Blue Checks. You get what I'm saying? I'm living the life that I could have only dreamed of five years ago. I'm enjoying myself, I'm happy, and I'm making more money than I've ever made in my life. But the coconut water didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? The MLM didn't do it. The regular Coca-Cola didn't do it. My first job, but it was that Coke Zero. That's how, you, that's how I want you to think about it. Don't close your mind to opportunities because once you do that, you will then close off the very opportunities that could get you exactly to where you want to be. So this whole thing is basically three steps. Surround yourself around the right people. Not just monetarily, I'm talking about with every aspect of your life. Surround yourself around the right people. That's what the name of the game is. Observe the masses and do the opposite. You're, you're gonna have ambitious goals, you're gonna have goals to, let's say if your goal is just to get a degree and then get a full-time job. You're gonna have obstacles in the form of people who try to stop you from doing that in ways that are not invasive, in ways that are like, hey man, you wanna go out to, uh, to the club tonight? Stuff like that. Hey, I got this party that I'm going to later, you want to come? Stuff like that. You have to be disciplined and grounded in who you are. And when you have time, sure, go ahead. But when you don't, you got to be firm on your decision. Like, nah, I'm not going. I'm not giving into all this other mess. I'm not getting caught up in what all everyone else gets caught up into and then wonder why they're not as successful as they want to be. You get what I'm saying? And, and the third thing is just not closing yourself off, like being open-minded about your success. Like any Anything, any key can open any door. Think of it that way. If you get a degree in, let's say, biology, that might open up a door to manufacturing that you didn't even realize existed. But that door to manufacturing, once you open it, you might realize it pays you a world's more than biology in that field does. You get what I'm saying? And I know that was a weird example, but 
I literally know a person who lived out that exact example and they're making a lot more than they would have if they would have stayed within the biological field because he only had his bachelor's in biology. He didn't have a PhD or an MD or anything like that. But he went into manufacturing and got a leadership position and now he's making a lot more than he would have been making if he stayed in this field. That's what I'm talking about. So anyways, my camera is definitely about to die and I've already said everything I wanted to say in this video. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And I'll definitely be seeing you in the next one. And if you have any questions, if you have anything that you want to ask me to make a video about, leave them down in the comments down below. I have a website as well. I have financial coaching there. I have a free option and I have a paid option. Check it out. I also have a book coming out very, very soon just for you. So anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you. Control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.